So, do you get scared when you're about to speak in front of a large amount of people? You as a singer or musician, do you get scared or nervous? Or do you have fight flight before you go on stage in front of thousands of people? We have to have courage in the midst of fear. Do you get fight flight when you're about to speak in front of a boardroom of people presenting your PowerPoint in front of all these people about talking about budgets or projects or whatever? Or are you a singer that gets fight flight right before you go on stage? You're in front of thousands of people that are there to see you sing and you're nervous or you're terrified. Well, let's just talk about this for a moment. Fight flight. Fight flight is basically the increase of cortisol in the system, which is our fight flight, kind of like the hunter gatherers when they were threatened by a saber toothed tiger or whatever. It was either fight, flight, or freeze. I want to tell you three stories that encapsulates how I had fight flight before I was doing music, a concert. The first story is this. It was at the Marriott. Now picture this. It was at the Marriott in this white tent. There was hundreds of chairs set out for us to sing to when they arrived. 30 minutes before the concert was to start, we did a mic check, Carissa and I. We started singing and then all of a sudden the power went off 30 minutes before we were supposed to do the concert. So we're freaking out. There's no power in this tent. It's super dark when there was light before. So the producer went to the manager, couldn't find the manager. So I went out into the lobby and found the manager and I said, you know, we have no electricity in the tent. We're supposed to be doing a concert in 30 minutes. Can we do something about this? So it was just basically kind of fight flight for me because I produced this concert. We were raising money for an organization. And basically, right before the concert was supposed to happen, people started showing up and then the electricity went back on. Like finally, right? Electricity went back on, people started showing up. We're freaking out. Fight flight, like all of us have fight flight because you know, we've only had about a month to prepare for this concert. And we had a piano there, we have a guitarist, then we have uh, basically a stage, and we're getting ready to start the concert. I am nervous. We go out there and we pray, because that, that kind of helps me. And then we get into the concert. The music starts, and we do an awesome job. We do an awesome job. I did some arias, we did some Broadway shows, we did some Andrea Bocelli, and basically, it was a success. We got two standing ovations, and we raised over $5,000 for this organization. So I want you to know, even though I had fight flight and I was nervous, I had the courage to go through with this concert, and it was a success. The other story I want to tell you about is about the one rehearsal concert. I was producing a concert called Faith, Hope, Love. And we had all these songs that we were going to do for this Faith, Hope, Love. We were also raising money for an organization. So picture this, okay? Picture this. The Friday before the concert, they said we could only have one rehearsal because the next week they're going to be doing a wedding before the concert. The next day is the concert. So the week before on the Friday, we had one rehearsal with the keyboard, the guitar, and the drummer. One rehearsal. That's pretty tough when we have not gone through the whole set list. So we basically took many hours to do one rehearsal. And then we had no rehearsal until the concert. The concert, we got there early and we were be able to rehearse a little bit. But then one of the songs we had to throw out because it was not going to work out. So anyways, we were nervous throughout the whole thing. I did a prayer before we went on and did the concert. And I remember we were getting ready and the drummer said, oh, I forgot my kit. I have to go back to my house and get my kit. I'm like, where do you live? Mission VA, ho? You're serious? You're going to get back here in time for the concert? Oh yeah, no problem. Barely he got back. Anyways, we did the Faith Hope Love concert. It was a success and we raised money for an organization. 
Now, the third story I want to tell you, picture this, okay? I talk to the tech people and the video people, and I'm doing a service. I'm going to be singing at a service. And I talk to them, and I said, you know, I have a YouTube video that has the lyrics and the music. I'll just send you the link. And, and they basically said, oh, it's okay. We, you know, we can work with this. We can work with this. We'll get this working. So, the service happens. It's my time to go up and sing. So I go up on stage and I pull the microphone off the stand and then there's feedback. And I'm like, this is not going very well already, right? So there's feedback. So then I look up and I kind of like look at them and they start the video. The, t the music starts not playing and it's just lyrics. And I, I, I start, sit wait a second, there's no music. There's no music for the song. So I had the microphone in my hand and it was feedback. So I put the microphone down and I knew that this YouTube video froze too. And so I realized I was on my own and I had some opera training so I knew how to belt my voice. I started belting my voice and I did the whole song a cappella. And then I shortened the song by not doing one of the choruses. So anyways, I watched the video the next day or the day after that and I noticed that the music is piped into the online streaming video as me singing. And I said, there was no music in the church and other people verified there was no music in the church. And basically on the video, they had the music piped in as I was singing. And once they realized that they kind of messed up. They stopped the music on the streaming and the rest of it was me a cappella. I had really no microphone other than the one I had in my hand. And so basically I was able to project my voice and be able to sing the song a cappella. And I heard this story that people that use PowerPoint, the one that has the most PowerPoint slides, it doesn't work out. So when I look at it now, I realize, okay, technically it didn't work out with this the online YouTube video that was going to be playing the music. So I was able to improvise. I was able to have courage in the midst of fear. Have you ever been called out or made an example of by a teacher at school? Not because you did anything wrong, just they wanted to make an example out of you so that the other students would stay silent and not try to challenge the teacher. Well, I want to tell you three stories that highlights me being called out, me being made an example, not because I did anything wrong, just because I stood up for what I thought was right. My first story is about my final exam I was taking for my freshman year English class. Mrs. Gray was my teacher, and I remember I was taking the test on Homer's The Odyssey. I studied so much for that, I was ready, and I remember the morning of the, the test, before I went to school, my dad was whispering my question answers into my ear so that I would be ready for the test. And I felt ready. I went to my English class freshman year with Mrs. Gray. I took my final exam. I know I aced it. I was so excited. I turned in the paper and I know I had an A. I went back to my desk and someone put a pencil on my desk and I said, whose pencil is this? Mrs. Gray looked at me, tore up my, my paper, my final exam and said I failed and told me to sit down. I was like, what is going on here? I know I aced the test. I did not give answers. I did not call out answers to the students. All I said was, whose pencil is this? That's all I said. So I went home really bummed out. I was upset. I was really upset. I went home, told my parents. They were like, that's not right. You didn't do anything wrong. You didn't give an answer. To the students. So the next day in the morning, the next morning, my parents stood by the classroom where Mrs. Gray was. They open up the door and Mrs. Gray is, oh you must be Paul's parents, are you? Yes. She knew because she knew she went across the line that was not right for her to do as a teacher. And she told my parents that she made an example of me so that the other students wouldn't try to speak up. So anyways, Mrs. Gray realized she made a mistake 
of making an example of me, calling me out, not because I did anything wrong, but just because I stood up for myself. And so, she gave me the A for the Homer, the Odyssey final exam. I want to tell you another story. Okay, picture this. Okay, the teachers are striking at our high school because they're not getting enough pay. And I understand this because teachers are very, very important. And they're the ones that teach the people that become multimillionaires. They're the ones that teach the athletes that become millionaires. So we were doing the right thing. We had a sit-in on the quad. And I remember Greg was the organizer. He was basically the leader. And he was well-respected. He was an A student, 4.0 grade, point average. And he had another guy there that was not, not accepted by the school board or the principal. He was a troublemaker in their eyes. So those two are the ones that organized the sit-in. And I remember there was like <clears throat> a lot of people, like maybe 300 people in the quad sitting, just sitting there, not going to class, just sitting there. And I remember Mr. Bradley, our principal, was walking around trying to find someone to point out. And I remember he came over to me and he says, Paul, are you part of this? And I said, yes, I'm part of this. And then he says, okay, come with me. He wrote me up and I got probation for the rest of the semester. Not because I did something wrong. I was doing what was right because it was unfair what they were doing to the teachers because those teachers deserve more pay for what they have to deal with with classes and waking up at three in the morning and four in the morning after they graded papers all night. And then they have to get to school again. And then they have to deal with the students and if they're going to learn and the class clowns to interrupt the classes. So I believe that these teachers deserve a lot more money. So I was made an example of and called out, not because I did something wrong, but because I stood up for what I believed in. So I want to tell you a story about a goal, dream, and vision that came true for me. I was walking in the quad my eighth grade year in junior high, and I walked by this band room and they were playing a song. Living on a Prayer by Bon Jovi. I love that song. I know that song. So I walked into the band room and I said, you guys are doing Living on a Prayer. And they said, yes we are. I said, I know the words to the song. Well, why don't you sing with us? So we practiced every day in the band room and I found out that we were going to be doing a talent show and they entered into the talent show to do Living on a Prayer. So I'm all excited. So I, I remember the day. It was the day of the talent show. And basically, all the skills, talents, and abilities with all the different acts, the skits, all this stuff, they, they did all the production. And we were the headliners. So the curtains were closed again. And then the keyboard was there, the bass guitar, the drums, the guitar, and the two singers, me and this other guy. Anyways, we had dry ice and buckets of water and all the steam was flowing on the ground. We had cables, it was wet floor. The curtains opened, the music starts playing. Everybody in the audience is cheering. There's like 300 people in the audience. We played the song, and I started singing. Tommy is the work of the dogs. Union's been on strike. He's down on his luck. He's tough. Whoa, so tough. So I kept singing. I kept singing. I did the first verse. And then I went over to the other singer and gave him a high five. And I felt this current going through my arms, my hands. And I'm like, what's going on here? And I'm, I'm about to do, this, do the second verse. And I start singing. There, there's no microphone. The microphone's out. What happened? The other singer was fine. He starts singing the second verse. And I'm all out now. I can't sing anymore because my microphone's out. So I'm just up there kind of dancing and just going with the music and stuff. And I remember after the concert or that headlining song, I went to the, the keyboard and said, what happened? My mic went out. He says, Paul, there was water on the ground from the dry ice, there was cables on the ground, and when you gave him a high five, you completed a circuit and shorted out your microphone. I'm saying, whoa, and he goes, that could have been serious, Paul, but it wasn't. I was saved, no problem. And I remember we won first prize. We won first prize for this concert of this one song. And I remember we were disqualified because they didn't register the two singers, me and this other guy. And I said, that's kind of stupid. Why would they let us do the, the headlining uh, song if we weren't registered? That doesn't make sense. They wouldn't let us do the song. So anyways, we protested. We had all the students to protest. 
And I remember they gave us back first place and they gave us movie tickets. So that was good. So I want to let you know, reach for your goals, dreams, and visions. And I remember that after I did that song, I said, I want to be a singer. I think that'd be awesome to be a singer. So reach for your goals, dreams, and visions. Have you ever done an internship when you were in college? Well, I have, and I want to share it with you. So I went to the bulletin board one day at school, and I found this internship with a movie company, and they were doing a documentary on teachers from kindergarten to 12th grade. And my job was to log the time code for each of the mini DV tapes. And mini DV tapes are the digital tapes that were in the 90s, usually. And basically, I had to do the time code for each of the scenes. Sometimes the scenes were three seconds, sometimes they were a minute, sometimes they were 20 minutes. And basically, I had to log all these time codes for all these scenes. And I got to know these teachers, and I was able to see what they go through as a teacher on a daily basis. I would see these teachers teaching, what, four or five periods with different classmates, and some were class clowns, and they interrupted the class, and they'd have to stop their lessons. But then they would get back and do their lessons. At the end of the day, they would go home, grade papers till like three in the morning, go to bed for maybe an hour, wake up and leave at five again to go back to school and teach. I got so much respect for these teachers. These teachers are underpaid. They do so much for the students. And these students become millionaires and athletes. And these teachers are underpaid. So anyways, I learned a lot from these teachers. And I was thinking, wouldn't it be awesome? You know the, the NFL draft or you know the sports drafts? where they say like, you know, the first pick and they get, you know, $7.5 million for seven years to play. Well, why, would, why not do this for teachers? Wouldn't it be great if they have a teacher's draft where they say, you know, this teacher is going to be teaching at this high school and they have a five-year contract for $3.5 million? I mean, that would be awesome because, you know, teachers have to get all these degrees just to teach in elementary school junior high, high school, college, grad school,